Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Hard Time series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. In this episode, we begin by looking at our little Duna probe, which carries a Science Junior, two goo containers, and a thermometer. And we are attempting to bring back science from Duna. So you see here, it prior to its mid-course plane change, and the first thing I need to do is actually adjust that plane change to make sure that we get decently close to Duna. And then we actually do the 8 meters per second. I always make a point to show the mid-course plane change because it's somewhat magical. It's really important to do it. It makes a huge difference. And it is sort of, uh, there, there are two points of art when it comes to approaching a planet. One is the mid-course plane change and the other, of course, is uh, once you get into the system and make your adjustment burn here. And you can see me doing that, trying to get a maneuver node plotted, but the, the thing just doesn't want to let me put a maneuver node on there, no matter where I hold the cursor. I eventually have to get pretty close to the planet, and so uh, it gives a faulty little reading of how much it will cost. But anyway, it, uh, it doesn't cost nearly that much. It's only uh, probably a dozen meters per second. But you can see I've uh, managed to get an Ike encounter first so we're going to fly by Ike and then head on over to Duna. Uh, we don't have that much science with us so uh, we're just gonna have to try and do a goo container around Ike and that's about it. Otherwise the thermometer, the other goo container and the science junior have to be reserved for Duna. So here we go approach to Duna and Ike. Uh, you can hardly approach one without approaching the other sometimes and indeed that was the case here. Uh, slowing down as we get nearer and nearer to Ike's sphere of influence. I wonder about doing uh, experiments out here, but I think I do get a high over Ike, but near to Duna for all of them. So there's plenty more science to do. I mean, we have to do high over Duna. I haven't done any high over Duna. And uh, we're going to have to do other things. But first things first, I need to adjust my orbit around Duna. Uh, mainly to flatten it out as you can see but also to get closer to its atmosphere you might wonder why I bother even flattening it out and that's because uh, I want to make sure that the transfer back is easier it's easier to transfer back if the orbit is flat and so high over Ike as promised uh, the goo container but the other science has to be reserved for Duna so here we go I have to do one more burn in order to make sure that I get to the right altitude in Duna's atmosphere for aero braking. Uh, unfortunately, I neither used aero braking calculator nor did I decide to do the maneuver at the right time, so it ended up costing more than it should have. And so ultimately, I spent uh, quite a bit of fuel here. But I got the job done. Got right about where I had plotted it, though that would end up not being the correct altitude. So here we go. Of course this probe does have an antenna so that we can transmit the information back should anything happen to it. But uh, So I wasn't worried about that part of it. Uh, there's the information for the goo container around Duna, a red sheen. Fair enough. Uh, is it the glow from the planet or something more? the normal radioactive samples. I hope they get some more uh, flavor text for the science in the new version. They're supposed to be adding more science to all the planets, uh, biomes to the planets, but we need a lot more flavor text. There was a community config that had new flavor text for all of them, uh, but of course that would be modding the game and this is an unmodded series, so I did not add that in, though it would be, it would be probably a little bit more fun to see what kind of messages the community came up with. Uh, so again, arrow breaking did not work out quite right, so I had to do a retro burn. And I decided that we would go around Duna one more time. I raised the periapsis a bit in order to make things safer, but I actually raised it more than I wanted to. It's tough to make an accurate uh, burn from all the way out at uh, that high an apoapsis. So in the end, uh, there will be more adjustments. Here's the temperature reading. And with that, we've completed all the science we can do with this probe, actually. So, uh, the second pass for aerobraking brings us 
down. And actually, I probably wouldn't normally show you all the air braking, it's except for this little bit where we have the somewhat beautiful uh, manipulations of Ike. Uh, Ike does make some interesting orbits. And you can see here it creates a loop-de-loop, -loop, it shoots us back out for a bit, and then it puts us into this very high inclined orbit. It's a very influential little moon. So um, anyway, I always like the sort of uh, perturbations that Ike causes as we encounter it. But ultimately I have to do a quick little burn there to wipe it out because I can't have the probe being shot out into interplanetary space or anything like that. So, after all that, I make sure that we end up in a tight orbit around Duna so that Ike does not influence it. And that frees me to focus on other missions. And uh, to decide what to do about that, I take a look at planetary alignments. But uh, first, I make sure that our probe is all good. It looks fine, floating around Duna at a safe uh, altitude. Uh, 60 kilometers is pretty much safe on the periapsis side and I wouldn't go for more than 1 point, uh, 1,200 kilometers on the apoapsis to avoid Ike. Okay so here I take a look and it turns out EVE is our best bet and we already have a contract for EVE anyway so I time warp to that since our probe is safely around Duna and it'll take some time to get to the transfer back uh, Kerbin has to be 75 degrees behind Duna to make the transfer back uh, efficient to make the home and transfer so we're gonna be waiting anyway so we might as well do some other missions in the meantime and Eve is our target so uh, here we are uh, Eve at the right phase angle for us so I check on our mission around Duna to make sure it didn't get influenced by anything and here we go launching basically the same mission that we did to Duna. Uh, in fact, I think it's exactly the same mission. I don't think I made any adjustments at all. It costs about 20,000 funds, so it's very... Well, it's fairly cheap for an interplanetary mission. It's not the cheapest possible, but it's pretty good. Now, uh, this is science, so we know that everything happens exactly like it did before, so the first boosters separate just fine, but the second boosters, of course, Despite all my efforts to throttle up, uh, to wait a little while, to delay the separation, those boosters are still going to make the weird explosion anyway. And that's science for you. So, uh, so yeah, and science also tells us that uh, this made orbit previously on the launch stage and it will do so here again. So as we see the launch stage burning out here and we just separate it, Separate it. There we go. And check our orbit. And indeed, checking apoapsis and periapsis, we see that it is a fine orbit indeed. So I get to plot for Eve, which is uh, which is a little bit trickier than usual. It requires a mid-course plane change to hit because it's got a bit of an inclination. So there you see, I'm adjusting the mid-course plane change in order to get it closer. We aren't actually going to see the EVE encounter just on the initial burn, so we're going to have to try and do that pretty pretty precisely. I'm going to have to do that pretty precisely. Uh, I, I often use we because I'm referring to myself and the Kerbals, and you know the program in general, but uh, with an unmanned mission maybe I should be using I more often, though I suppose there are Kerbals involved in mission control or something. So here we go, the end of the burn, and I can't really check the map to see what's going on because uh, the mid-course plane change is the one that really gets us the encounter, so I eventually just have to aim for the maneuver node marker and get as close to it as possible. And as it wanders away, I try a little bit of a burst closer to it, but otherwise I just have to adjust the mid-course plane change to uh, wipe out any flaws in the trajectory. So here we go, departing Kerbin. But this is not the only thing I'm going to do. Uh, it would be a waste to uh, just send this little probe out to EVE. Uh, it's relatively easy to create an EVE lander, but I want to make sure that we have a look at the science department, the, well, not the science department, the uh, missions, 
what do we call it? Uh, mission Control? Yeah, Mission Control. Check out Mission Control to see what missions we have lined up and pick those up before we decide what other missions to send out to EVE. We don't really have uh, EVE itself, though you see an Explore Gilly there. But first, I noticed that we have a science data from Space Randuna. Well, we're doing that already, so we might as well pick that up. Um, the, the other tests... Especially the part tests I'm not interested in, but we gotta get science data from space around Ike already. But I get hooked up on this whole plant a flag on Duna thing, thinking about that. The failure penalty is not too bad, actually, so... And, uh, you know, we've got a long duration on it. But anyway, pick up the science data from around Ike first. And explore Gilly, now that's the thing. Um, can we just uh, finish up the explore Gilly thing? Landing on it, uh, recovering signs from the surface of it. I think that's a thing to do with us all lined up with uh, Eve already. So checking out the numbers, I say go for it. Come on, there we go. And since I'm in the mood to pick up these interplanetary missions, I go ahead and pick up the other two that are on display and just leave the part ones there because I'm not too interested in testing parts right now. So, in, interplanetary all the way. And that's good, so back out. We need to launch some more missions. I decided to get the Gilly Lander together first and basically it's just a variation on the on the probe that we've already sent. I decided not to be too innovative in the hopes that we could keep things uh, cheap. And so I just shorten up the tank so instead of a two-ton tank I go with uh, one and a half tons there and add lander legs basically that's it I shift the the goo containers down and that's all that's there just a little bit of reconfiguring for this launch to Gilly so this is a Gilly lander and it's it's not so much just for Gilly because otherwise I could have used much smaller thrusters but um, it's more of a general purpose thing it could have been much lighter if it was just for Gilly so a uh, normal pattern here First set of boosters fall off just fine. Second set of boosters, well, you know what's going to happen. At least it's predictable and it isn't catastrophic, so I, I'm not going to complain. It's just strange. Let's face it. It's it's not it's not a problem. It's just strange. Anyway, orbit uh, works out just fine. In fact, of course, uh, we end up with a little bit uh, more fuel left over because if you dump about a half ton worth of mass in terms of fuel and then add 0.2 tons in terms of lander legs, you end up with uh, 0.3 tons to spare. So actually, uh, we got to orbit with some fuel left in the launcher stage. But anyway, uh, plotting for EVE intercept is much easier since we already have a mission going out. I just sort of uh, match my orbit to it and then fine-tune that. Of course, it's a different timing So it does have to be fine-tuned a bit, but it's much quicker this way And so I get a nice Eve periapsis 326 kilometers after the mid-course plane change and uh, The burn proceeds uh, expending the first stage And then going with the actual what is really the lander stage now the probe stage and so yeah, it's nice to have a reliable system and a cheap system, remember, uh, as you saw in the VAB, about uh, 20,000 funds. Not uh, not too expensive. And so uh, here we go doing a final little adjustment, making sure that uh, it is as close as possible so that the mid-course plane change, when I tweak it here, will get us to the desired altitude. It is a significant plane change for these missions, 370 odd meters per second for each of them. But we've got enough fuel, and so here we go, another scenic Kerbin departure sequence as this probe 2 goes out into interplanetary space to join its uh, the other EVE probe. And so we see here them exiting Kerbin's sphere of influence. At this point, I didn't immediately think of sending another mission, but after I turn back to the tracking station, I noticed that really landing on EVE is not that big a deal, right? So. And all we have to do is land on EVE and transmit the science to fulfill that contract. So let's just send another mission, right? It's got the parachutes already. It's got the lander legs. It's just not going to come back, this this one. So uh, off it goes. The same exact pattern as before. No big surprises. 
Right. Actually, that was uh, less of an explosion than usual. I wouldn't uh, bet on being able to predict anything by that. It was a nice view as we uh, completed our orbit around Kerbin at basically sunrise with the moon there as well. So I decided to keep this shot of us completing the orbital burn. Okay. Plotting for Eve is of course very straightforward this time again and so I I actually spend a lot of time trying to tweak it uh, to being picky for no apparent reason. So that's what you see me doing here. Really I can't get any closer than that from out here anyway. But uh, here we go uh, with the departure burn, uh, trans eve injection if you will. The moon, the sun and Kerbin still in view though not for long as we have the camera flip once we reach escape velocity. And there we go, just trying to hit the maneuver node as closely as possible to satisfy the mid-course plane change, which in this case is a little bit more than the other missions, which probably means it'll come in first, I think. Okay, the final departure sequence of this episode. Off it goes. For some reason on the mid-course plane change I ended up with a little bit of a radial tilt to it and you can see that based on the maneuver node there and the fact that the probe pointing at the maneuver node is a little bit tilted instead of just straight up and down. Don't know if that really helped or not, but anyway, so these are the mid-course plane changes, first one. And so I went back to the tracking station and made sure that I knew which one, what the order was. And so everything is in the proper order and it's all a matter of uh, using the magic of the mid-course plane change to get as close to EVE as possible without actually crashing into it. Uh, a good uh, atmospheric encounter is what we're aiming for here. And so I, I tweak it very carefully giving bursts of thrust and 77 kilometers is in the atmosphere of EVE so I stop there and that's a first probe angled in there and next one in a way it would be more interesting if I had very different probes but on the other hand we are trying to uh, keep things efficient and uh, our budget is tight and so it's more important to have reliable probes than to have particularly innovative systems I guess that's how space agencies actually run so EVE launch number two got into the atmosphere on its mid-course plane change and so this is number three one of the landers and this also, as we see here, carefully throttling the thrust and getting well below the planned amount of 800 kilometers. And now well, that's good enough. 86 kilometers is fine. I think that is in the atmosphere, maybe just skimming it. Okay, so. This is Eve Sphere of Influence, and the first probe that arrived here was one of the landers. And so the first thing, of course, is to correct its uh, inclination, which is a combination of the little purple markers and the little blue markers. Purple magenta, I guess magenta. Okay, and the actual burn here. As usual, it didn't give me the maneuver node anywhere near where I'm at. Uh, it just sort of lets me create a maneuver node in somewhere in the middle of the orbit. That's fine. As long as I know the direction, it's okay. And fine-tuning it. I did use Aero Breaking Calculator. You do not want to mess around with Eve's atmosphere. I did want an exact number. And so I aimed for about that to 65 kilometers-ish for the, for the Aero Breaking arrow capture in this case. So the approach to EVE, the big purple planet. wonder why they decided to make it purple. I wonder what chemicals actually make it purple. These are things that should be answered. Anyway, purple planet, arrow breaking here. Since I used arrow breaking calculator I was not too worried about crashing into the thing, but still better to Keep an eye out for that. We do have plenty of fuel to boost ourselves back up in case that were to occur, but looks like the 
mirror breaking works just fine. I decide to uh, aim for a relatively high apoapsis just in case, so that uh, we don't know which of the landers is actually going to land on Gilly at this point. They're identical landers, so so uh, it'll end up being whichever one has more fuel because it has to also return back to Kerbin, and also the one that has the higher apoapsis. Here I am burning at apoapsis to increase my periapsis so that we are no longer in the atmosphere and I can turn to the other missions safely. And so this is mission number two. This is another lander, possibly a Gilly lander, possibly an Eve lander. Haven't decided yet here. And we make our correction burn. You can see the little markers on the nav ball changing as we flip around thanks to this burn. And there we go. Going nice and prograde, counterclockwise. And uh, actually, the planned 71 kilometers looks good. Let's try and get it close to that. Uh, went too far, 76, but I eventually burn it uh, appropriately and get it down to 71. So, now Eve approach. This is going to be a shorter episode than usual, and that's because, of course, we've got all these uh, missions that are sort of uh, repetitive in format. And so I wanted to cut out as much as possible. And But that doesn't mean that it didn't take for a long time to actually conduct all this stuff. It did take a fair amount of time, so that's the constraint on this. Oh, so hard drive space. I actually started running out of space for the actual video files. So as we see this mission getting aero captured and breaking into a higher orbit than the first lander mission and so this is probably going to be our ghillie mission and uh, that it was on my mind the fact that I was running out of high hard drive space and uh, probably couldn't uh, get all this stuff down in this episode we'll have to wait until the next episode to a uh, get all these missions done and then also b get the Duna mission back. So that's the plan for the next episode. But here we go, getting this into a stable orbit. I go with 120 kilometers on the periapsis. So I think that's well outside Eve's atmosphere. So all is well. This little lander is stable. And so mission number three, which is uh, ironically the first mission that we sent out. This is the pure probe, which is simply supposed to get science in orbit and then return back to back to Kerbin. Since it's going to have to boost back out to Kerbin and we don't want to transfer this to Gilly, I go with the lower number, 67-ish uh, here, 67 kilometers. Uh, that's actually higher than the first lander, but uh, this was also going slower, so it sort of uh, balances out, I think. We end up uh, getting a similar orbit, I think. But uh, the point is, this isn't transferring to Gilly, so there's no point keeping it in a high orbit. But because it was going slower, the calculation was a little bit different. Okay, so approach to Eve here. Camera orientation changes as we get closer. And I, I start doing some science. I actually think I, uh, I edited out one mystery goo. And as you see, I click here, that, that container is already done. And that was probably high over EVE. So this is in space near EVE. So that's one goo container. Then the Science Junior. Yes, very good. Uh, stuff to paint with, got it. And then the thermometer. Alright, so we've got some EVE science done. Not transmitting that back yet. That's important. The job is not done just by capturing the science. And of course, it means that if we end up getting a contract for for uh, science around EVE, like we did with uh, Duna and Ike, uh, as you saw in this episode, we might get some more funds and science thanks to that. And reputation, of course. So, getting this into... A stable orbit is the last event in this episode. We have a grand total of four missions to deal with in the next episode, and my goal in the next episode is to uh, see all these missions through. So um, you can tune in to see how it all works out or doesn't work out. Landing on EVE, 
with one probe, landing on Gilly and returning that probe back to Kerbin, uh, returning this probe back to Kerbin, and then returning the Duna probe back to Kerbin. Um, though I don't know if that's the exact order, we'll have to see. It depends on the alignments of the planets, of course, and whether uh, we get into alignment for the Duna return before we get into alignment for the Eve return. That's a complicated thing. Um, yep, so I'll, I'm going to have to look into that and see what those angles are and how long it is, etc. So, but we still did some science. We got to another planet in this series. We had not visited Eve before, and we did it cheaply and with many, many probes. So uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.